Today we're going to be beach combing and we're here in the middle of winter. You see, most of us tend to go to the beach in the summer when it's all sunny and lovely and there's ice creams for sale in the car park and you, you can go swimming. But no, you're missing a big trick, you see. We come here in the winter because, one, there's no one else here and it's brilliant, great for wildlife, and also there's no one pinching all the good shells. And secondly, those winter storms, those big violent winds and storms we get, bring up all sorts of really cool things onto the beach. And hopefully we're going to find some of those today. But before we do so, I'll just introduce my field, two field assistants for today. We have Daya Hello. and we have Ollie. Hello. And they're going to be helping me find lots of cool things on the strand line. So, the strand line, how do you identify the strand line? Well, it's easy. You look along the beach, and there it is, that line of seaweed and flotsam and jetsam, all sorts of rubbish that's been thrown up out of the sea. And among all that, among all that seaweed, we should try and find some really, really good things. Right, this stuff's good. Looks um, a little bit like coral, doesn't it? Um, it's actually a seaweed, so it is an algae. Um, but they call this coralline seaweed because what it does, it takes various minerals out of the water. That's got lots of calcium in it, which makes it kind of crunchy. Same stuff your teeth are made of. Oh, well, yeah, we want lots of mussels. There's a whole bunch of them there. All stuck together with what you call the beard of a mussel. So you see all that uh, sort of weird hairy stuff? They're called bisal threads and they're produced by the mussels themselves. And that's what they, they anchor themselves to the rocks or the seabed with. So that's mussels and bisol threads. We're doing all right today. We've only just started. We've got a nice little, little collection in our bucket. There's two little shells here. Have a real good look around. Oh, wow, look at that one. You can actually see the structure of that one as well. Little painted top shells. It's a necklace shell. Look that one. Just the colours. Beautiful, beautiful colours. There are some hazards, one of which is uh, dog's muck. That's been polished by the sea, that shell. It's like a dog well, but that's a dogfish egg coast. Shore crab shell, it's nice. Oh, one of my favourites. A little yellow sperry. Pop them in the bucket too. Right, let's press on. Let's see what else we can find. If you find enough weird shells like that, you make a necklace out of them. Beach cam is really addictive, and it's good to sort of keep track on how far you've walked from, say, you know, the footpath that leads to the beach or the car park because we've well, got to remember, you've got to walk back again. Right, what you found there. First of all, have you got any idea what they might be? Eggs. Eggs, you're spot on. That's exactly what, what they are, but of what kind of animal? Some kind of fish. Some kind of fish. These are the eggs of an animal called the whelk. And normally, they form these big spongy balls. Um, they're called sea wash balls because sailors used to use them to scrub the decks of the boats with. Um, it's almost like bubble wrap, isn't it? Each one of these little bubbles is called a lens. And each one of those lens can have several hundred eggs inside it. And then the several hundred little eggs that, that are in there, you'd think several hundred little snails would hatch out, wouldn't you? Well, they don't, because something quite sinister happens. Um, the first babies out eat all their brothers and sisters. So then you get one or two coming out of each one of these cells. Because all this seaweed will naturally decompose and it'll all wash back out to sea. Of course, all these brightly coloured bits, we've got loads of plastic and coffee cup lids and bits of plastic rope, fishing line. I mean, look at it, all this stuff will be around forever. This is never going to break down. This is litter. And unfortunately, there's a lot of litter on many, many beaches because of human beings. Um, and actually, this is a good point to remind you, is that you, if you don't know what it is and you're a bit wary about something, if it could be a can of some chemicals or a bottle of something, leave it alone. Of course, if your watch group wants to do a big beach clean, well, that's a totally different thing because it's organised, so you can come along and collect all the litter. But just be aware there's some nasty stuff here too. Oh, that's nice. Not nasty at all, that's a sponge. Very nice. Well, we've had about an hour or so walking up and down the strand line here, and we have a bucket full of all that is good that we've found. Now, you're going to help me get all this stuff out. A gull feather, a primary feather of a herring gull. Lots of seaweed. Now, this is good stuff. This here is, uh, is bladder rack. Have you ever wondered what the little bubbles are for? 
To keep it afloat. Oh, you're too good. Yes, to keep it afloat. Algae, seaweed is a plant just like any other and it needs to be near the light in order to, to grow and to flourish. So what happens is when the water comes in, the plant rises up. These act as like little buoys, little floats. So we've got some nice rack there. Okay, now Ollie has a little thing for mussels. We have more mussels than Arnold Schwarzenegger. Some of these are still alive. We have the, um, the whelk egg cases there the sea wash ball, or a fraction of a sea wash ball, because we didn't find a whole one, unfortunately. Well, what's that? No idea. Looks like a cat's tail, doesn't it? Like a dead cat's tail. Well, actually, it's the root of a horse tail that would have been growing in one of the little uh, streams that comes down to the beach here and has, uh, has been washed out. I just picked that up because I thought it looked quite unusual. Um, got some very cool stones here. This here is the egg case of a skate. And I can tell it's the egg case or a skate or a ray because it's got four spiky bits on the corner. It looks like a little purse. In fact, one of the other names for egg cases like this is mermaid's purse. So, skate egg cases, we've got quite a few of those, haven't we? That's a really nice one. There's a nice one, there's a fresher one there. This one's different. This isn't a skate, this is something else. It's got little, um, lots of little tendrils on it, which makes it the egg case of uh, a small shark, something like a dogfish. So we've got one of those as well. So we've got loads of crab carapaces. Now, you might feel sorry for these crabs. You think, oh, poor dead crabs. But for the most part, these are crabs that have just molted their, their skin. Their skeleton is on the outside. So in order to grow, the crab has to molt its, uh, its skeleton. We've got a very sad looking crab here. This is very smelly. It's definitely a dead crab. It's not a crab that's molted. Fortunately, he's reasonably fresh, but he is going to be very smelly very quickly. But um, I'm afraid to say it's not quite fine of the day. However, look at that. That's one of my favourite finds of the day. That is also a crab carapace, the top of a crab's exoskeleton. But it's a different kind of crab. This is the crab carapace of a spider crab, a spiny spider crab. And it's covered in bits of weed as well, but that's because they decorate themselves with seaweed to camouflage. So that's quite cool. I was hoping to find a whole cuttlefish um, bone because I thought that you know, it's one of those beachcombing classics, but that's about all. I found a portion of one. Normally this would look like a sort of a, um, a, a fat surfboard, and that would be the internal skeleton of one of those very, very uh, exciting um, and very active sea snails, the cuttlefish. So we found a bit of one of those. But we've got some very nice little sea snails here. Um, we tend to think of snails as being those sort of gentle vegetarians. Um, this one is. This is a, a little smooth periwinkle. They come in a variety of colours. I particularly like yellow. Um, but here we have two evil snails, right? This one here is a dog whelk. And they'll drill their way through the shell of the poor live animal. At the same time, um, oozing a digestive juice, which dissolves the shell as well, like an acid. It eats the poor unfortunate uh, barnacle alive. So that's a little murderous mollusk. And, uh, and here's another murderous mollusk. This is the necklace shell. And the reason it's called a necklace shell is that it makes such a neat little hole in the shell of its victim, that if you collect enough of its victims, you can thread them up and make a necklace out of them. That's a pretty good haul, isn't it? Some beaches are even better than this. And also, if you get a big storm, bad weather forecast, Try and persuade your parents to take you to the beach the day after because you will find even more stuff than we found today. But I think you're getting the message. Beachcombing is a great thing to do on the beach in the wintertime.